All right, folks, thanks for joining us here in the main room. So we're going to have a panel discussion on mentoring and mentorship in the Fedora community. I'm going to go and hand it over to our panel host, Amita Sharma, and she'll get to know a little bit more about the panel. Thanks for being here. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, can you hear me well? Thanks for being here. So as Justin rightly said, we are here for a mentorship panel discussion. And to help me to conduct this panel, I have Yona. Uh, I'll introduce myself first. I'm Amita Sharma. I'm from Pune, India. And as a day job, I'm an engineering manager for Red Hat OpenShift AI. And out of my interest, I also contribute in Fedora DEI team. And I would like to request Yona to introduce herself. So hi again. <laughs> I'm Yona. I'm part of the DI team, and I'm also the current DI advisor. And I'm also involved with the um, mentorship topics. That's why I'm also one of the organizers of the Fedora Mentor Summit, and also helping Smira and Fernando with the Mentors Projects initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So why we are doing this um, panel discussion? I just want to reiterate, I think we have already seen this, the 2028 strategy for Fedora. It says the community stability, where everyone in Fedora has a mentor, and everyone in Fedora is a mentor. With that, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, my panel members. We'll start with Marie. Hi, everybody. I am Marie Norden, and I am a local from Rochester, New York. I work at the Python Software Foundation as a community communications manager. And I have been contributing to the Fedora community since 2013. And this is my 10-year flock anniversary. Who's next? <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, okay, so hello, I'm Fernando, um, software engineer at Red Hat, and I started my journey in tech mainly with mentorships as a mentee, of course. And well, nowadays I'm a mentor and also a mentor project initiative co lead with Smira and Jonah. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, mainly all. Hi, I'm Smira Goyal. I am a UX UI designer at Coinsight Labs. My journey with Fedora started as an outreach intern, um, and then I became an outreach mentor with Marie, and we mentored, co-mentored a couple of interns, three. Yeah. And now with Fernando, I am the co-lead of the Fedora Mentor Projects Initiative. So yeah, that's me. Hi. Hi, my name is Robert Wright. Um, I'm the head of advisory services at SureStep, a GRC consultancy. And at Fedora, I am a part of Fedora Pride and Fedora ComOps. And I do a lot in mentorship to help new contributors uh, get a great experience and time um, here at Fedora. So. Yeah, I'm Rene. I'm from Germany. I'm a junior developer, not yet working a lot in Fedora. I'm a new community member, but I had amazing mentors in the past. And unfortunately, not through mentorship programs. I organized it myself, but I'm really grateful. It's good, so great to have you. I think we need one more uh, mic, if it is possible. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us here. And we will start with some fun activities in here. It will not going to be a traditional, boring panel question answer session. We try to make it more creative. OK? So I have questions here, which is in the form of rapid fire round. Each of you will come in the center on a hot seat, will be given two minutes to answer four questions, each, each of you, OK? <laughs> so let's do that. Can we pull a chair as a hot seat? <laughs> Two minutes for four questions. <laughs> OK, so this is our hot seat. Who would like to come first? I'll leave it up to you. <laughs> 
I think Robert is very much ready. Let's do that. A big round of applause for Robert. Can we start the timer, please? Okay. What's the be best piece of advice you have ever given a mentee? Ask a billion questions. There is no dumb questions, and you should ask every single question you possibly can. Um, I think it's really hard for people, especially when they're starting anywhere professionally, open source, well, open source professionally too, a anywhere, any community, anything you're doing, I think the more questions you ask, the more you understand, the more you talk to people, the more you're going to get and understand things. Um, especially in Fedora, uh, the most I learn is asking people the why, the how, everything like that. So, yeah. Nice. What is the biggest lesson you have learned from a mentee? Uh, check in as often as possible. Um, I think sometimes people either try really hard to do you know, everything they can themselves or sometimes may get stuck and may not speak up. Uh, so checking in on mentees is probably the most important thing, even if it's just a casual, hey, how's it going? How, you know, what's your working on? You know, or even in a formal one-on-one -on -one setting, um, the check-in is so important to it. So it's something I've learned that the more I do it, the more value and the more um, our mentees get out of uh, the programs. So. Oh, I like it, the check-in. One word to describe your mentoring style. Uh, chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. Why so? Uh, I enjoy having a combination of uh, very formal uh, type of things, but I also love just, hey, you got two minutes. Let's look at this thing. You know, hey, I'm looking at this. You should maybe look at it too. It might be interesting for you, even if I'm just sitting here talking and going. You know, like let's take a look, right? Um, I, I do think it's uh, important that uh, ex uh, folks get exposure. Um, so, you know, I will periodically, personally, you know, say, hey, you want to come in and take a look at this thing with me, right? And, you know, pull folks in. So, chaotic. Last one. How do you motivate your mentees when they are struggling? And time is over. Your clapping sound will be directly proportioned to how you have related to the answers. So, Big round of applause for Robert. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. And your time starts now. We'll start with the question we left with. How do you motivate your mentees when they are struggling? Uh, empathize with them. Understand what they're currently going through, what's at the root of why they're unmotivated, what their struggles are, what their challenges are, and share experiences that I've had feeling those similar feelings. Amazing. What is the most rewarding part of being a mentor? Oh. Um, I think there's two parts. One is the aha moments when you see your mentee really grasp a concept or you know do something that they they're like wow success, um, and then like long term, seeing them blossom and succeed and go on to do you know their goals basically. Mm -hmm. And how do you balance giving guidance and allowing independence? Um, I think I saw that happening live. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a mixture of creative freedom and within the guidelines, right? So I do a lot of design mentorship. So, you know, there's, if we're looking at badges, for example, there's the kind of the style guide, but then within that style guide, there's a lot of space to do, you know, what each individual person wants to do. So... Some of it is just like letting go, like I might do it a different way and I just need to accept that that's not how it's gonna go. Mm -hmm. Nice one, I think that works for every relationship, right? <laughs> if you could give your, uh, your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Okay. Oh, All So, right. round of applause for Marie. <laughs> Louder, I think louder. He, she did really, really well. All right, Smira. Okay. 
Did you get the best angle yet? <laughs> okay. I think, Smira, you are too young to, get, to have this question, but still I got to ask oh, no. if you could give your younger self one piece of advice. What would it be? Oh, gosh. My younger self is with me right now. <laughs> um, I think I would say um, don't take yourself too seriously. It's not that big a deal. It's okay if you mess up. It's okay if you um, do something that was not perfect. It's completely okay. Mm -hmm. What is the most common mistake you see mentees make? I think they try to be... They try to make sure that they do everything correctly and they try to not mess up. Uh, they're afraid of making a mistake, which I think is making mistakes is important because that's how you learn. And more often than not, they're very afraid of doing that. And, and when mentees do make a mistake, that's a very nice learning opportunity, which they might miss out on if they are too paranoid about perfection or not making a mistake. Excellent. Okay, favorite book or resource to recommend to mentees? Oh, I would have to skip that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quick tip for maintaining a strong mentor mentee relationship communicate. I think communication is super important. Whatever you're feeling, it's important that you communicate with your mentor because more often than not, you'll find that the mentor is on the same page as you and they might be. They might offer you some advice that you may not have thought of. Like they're not going to get mad at you if you say like, "Oh, I don't really know." Like I'm struggling with burnout. That doesn't mean that your mentor is going to be like, "Oh no, that that's bad." Like you should not be having that. They might help you through it because more often than not, they've been in this exact same position as you have, as you are in, and they'll offer you advice that will help you get through it. So communicate. Mm -hmm. What is the best advice you have received from your mentor? Hmm. I think there's so many, actually. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> so it is the next one. <laughs> Thank you. What is the best advice you have received from your mentor? Oh, it was so long ago. So time. Um, okay. Um, fine. The best time to work for you. Uh, fixed schedule might not work for you. If you are comfortable working at 2 a.m., go ahead. If you are comfortable working at 8 a.m., at 2 p.m., 3, doesn't matter. Just find the best for you. One word to describe your mentor. I think I have not had, like, chaotic. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it has been a long ago. Um, <laughs> It's a little bit hard, but yeah, chaotic will be the best word for him. Okay. How has your mentee helped you overcome a challenge? Mentee? Mm hmm I changed the question so that you can't cheat. <laughs> um, can I skip this question? <laughs> That's totally fine. What is the most surprising thing you have learned from your mentor? Oh, um, there is a lot of special people out there. Um, social relationships are really hard. Um, everyone is special. Try not to be the bad guy in the room. I think that's, yeah, try to tolerate people as much as possible. As long as they do not do something really bad. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Okay. What do you appreciate most about your mentor? He's really a smart ass guy. <laughs> and why do, why do you think so? Oh, um, he, he always know um, how to do the things and he keeps calm about the situation and know how to fix the things. Yeah, before you go, can you name your mentor? I would prefer not to. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. That was your thank time. You. Thank you. And your time starts now. How do you prepare for your mentoring sessions? Writing down my questions in my notebook. Mm -hmm. 
what is one skill you have improved thanks to your mentor perseverance can you explain a little bit um, uh, about it prior to having my first mentor i gave up often and changed also jobs quickly and my mentor explained me the long term results from continuing this and this helped me a lot to change mm -hmm. what is the biggest challenge in being a mentee not being afraid to ask whatever is on your mind mm -hmm. how do you give feedback to your mentor i ask for permission and then i go full power <laughs> <laughs> if you if you could ask your mentor one thing what it would be oh, good question i ask already all of the things that i want to know mm -hmm. yeah I, i think i have to skip okay what is your favorite ice breaking question talking about core values in life talking about core values core values describe your mentoring relationship in one word parental mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. I think all of you have enjoyed the rapid fire round and I'm sure it has uh, trickled some thoughts in your mind now and you are ready to ask the questions. So now it is your time that you ask our panelists uh questions for next few minutes. So yeah please um how would you recommend mentoring someone when you don't have a lot of time for for that um cuz that's that's me <laughs> i don't have a lot of time <laughs> that's exactly what we want that what you are going through the challenges you can uh, ask those questions and challenges to our panelists and who would like to take that question please yeah i i think the easiest way to do that is you know it doesn't have to be a lot of time that you commit you know to to mentor to being a mentor right i think putting aside you know like a a fixed time once every 2 weeks or something where you can say hey for 30 minutes i'm just going to check in i think that's still an incredible amount of value to somebody even if it's not you know like a daily touch point or like a you know hey like how's it going on a weekly basis just having kind of fixed cadences for somebody allows them to prepare and come to a session to be able to say hey you know i'm going through these things i'm looking at these things i have these questions you're making yourself available but it's also not consuming you know a lot of time you don't have to really spend you know hours with somebody to you know get the same effect as maybe a really good you know session once a week or once every other week and and you know get a lot done so i think that's works i think i would recommend shadowing like if you let them shadow you working or going to a meeting so like double multitasking like you're ready doing things so they can kind of tag along and see see how you work I would add that it's important that you set the correct expectations. I think it's great that you recognize that you don't have a lot of time to mentor someone full time, but I think it's important that it should be communicated to the mentee as well so that they they don't expect a lot from you and you, so that you don't feel pressured that oh I have to give more time, I'm not giving enough time. Once you set those boundaries and communicate them clearly like I don't have a lot of time, but this is what I can do. This is what I can manage within the time I have. A mentee would also feel like they are being mentor properly or they have like they 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 know what to expect from you and so they will agree to the mentorship accordingly if that's what they need i will say find the right mentee um there are a lot of different people out there and some of them might not require a lot of time for you yes yes some 
small time to get things like moving forward, but maybe once a month, once every two weeks, or something like that. And there are others that will require daily support. So if you don't have capacity to do daily support, avoid that kind of mentees and try to redirect them to another person that could do that and try to help with the people that doesn't require that amount of time. Yeah. What would be your suggestions or recommendations or, or maybe what are the different approaches you use for something that might be more like group mentorship, working with like a larger group of people versus one-on-one -on -one mentorship where it's a lot more personalized? What are your, how do your approaches change for that or what are your thoughts on kind of the differences between a kind of group mentorship or individualized one-on-one -on -one mentoring? I think in a group setting, especially if you're mentoring somebody, having some sort of thing for that group to do and that you can, that is something that is okay to be repeatable by many people and get different results. I think that's really important for folks who are maybe learning for the first time something and you're giving them the opportunity to evaluate like, hey, how would I solve this and to leverage each other, right, as much as possible, which I think is different than maybe in a, a group one-on-one -on -one setting where you're more trying to not necessarily say, hey, this is how you should do this, but, you know, hey, this is how maybe the five ways I would solve it, and you may be suggesting that to the person individually, and in the group setting, you're more kind of leaving it open and saying, hey, come to the conclusions on your own, work together, share those results, and if you guys come to different uh, answers, that, that's okay too, right? But I, I think it's just the way you're formatting kind of the, how you're not necessarily like saying, here's something to do, but giving kind of the, uh, the things, opportunities for somebody to learn, right? I think another thing that uh, you can do, this is more like a more specific to, to the kind of deliverables that you would expect. And that is something like in a group setting, you would probably have something that's, that that is, as Robert mentioned, it's something that they can maybe discuss amongst themselves or maybe something that they can check on themselves that they don't need you so that you don't have to like go to, let's say, like 15 people and individually review or give feedback on something versus like in a one-on-one -on -one setting, that's more easy to, to give that kind of feedback. But in a group setting, you might have want to have deliverables or work that is just more objective and easy to review within the mentees themselves or maybe other resources. Okay, we have four minutes left for audience to ask the questions. We have more exciting stuff after that. So one last question we can take from the audience. Um, do you think anyone can be a, a mentor? I'm just saying that as someone who is kind of more on the introverted side that is interested but kind of, I suppose, scared, if that makes sense. Like, do you think that can be overcome? Great question. Thank you. Yeah, I think especially as an introvert, it makes a lot of sense to become a mentor as many introverts are also a bit afraid of extroverts. So <laughs> <laughs> I think you can be a great mentor, especially for people who have similar insecurities to, uh, yeah, that they can really relate to this and you can also understand their situation way better. So you should just go ahead and try it out. I would say yes, of course. Um, but if that's a challenge that you're facing, I would also then look for mentorship on the mentoring. So, you know, it can be challenging, but if you have someone to talk to about specifically mentoring um, and the challenges that come up with it, I think you could feel more confident. And once you put that, that advice into action and you see it working, 
it will build your confidence. I think mentoring is a team sport. Um, I think it's actually important that you have folks who maybe aren't extroverted and you know I think you need introverted folks who are maybe not necessarily have to be the person who's like directly you know kind of mentoring on a day-to-day -day basis but like I myself I, I run an internship program in my company and I think it's really important that there's not just me providing that you know that feedback I actually have multiple people who meet with the individuals and provide them you know hey I, I know this person is gonna be able to help you with this specific thing they have this experience I need you you know I tell my mentees to go check in with that person right so I can not only help build the folks who may not be directly mentoring or kind of in that mentoring role but they're still engaging with the process so maybe as a broader team type activity of mentoring if you're looking to start mentoring for the first time that might be another avenue that you could look to do as well so Amazing. Those were really nice thoughts. Anybody would like to add anything in there? Okay. How much time we have? Okay. So the next section we are starting is about role play. I know that you all have some kind of questions, like how does it look like to be a mentor, mentee? How those conversations flow, and the mentorship, uh, mentorship sessions or conversation, how it organically goes. Okay, so for that, we have a section of role play where a real mentor and mentee will come and play um, a real scenario in front of you that how a quick five to 10 minute session goes between them, uh, back and forth questions and the conversations. So I would like to invite Marie and Smira. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. <laughs> Thank you so much for accepting this last minute request. <laughs> that is very bold, and I'm sure our audience will enjoy it. So all the very best. Okay, I'm just, uh, let me I'm gonna go I'm going to look at you. Let me go back to my 20, like four years ago, just, <laughs> just, yeah. Okay, so we could, we could do like. The example Amita gave earlier was pretty good. Yeah, like my design ticket. Okay, so um, for context, I am a designer, and Marie is also a designer, and we, uh, when we did our internship, she was my mentor. So this is something that we would actually like happen quite often. Um, so yeah, okay, so this is one of our feedback sessions. And do you wanna start us off? Yeah, how's it going? How's it going with <laughs> ticket 392? <laughs> Um, it's going okay, you know, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, like I posted a design, I don't know if you saw that, uh, and I got a lot of feedback from a lot of different people, but it's like a, I don't know who to listen to, and I don't know how to respond to them. Okay, okay. well, let me bring up the ticket, okay. Beep, beep, boop, boop. <laughs> um... Okay, yeah, I see what you're talking about. This is a lot. Whew. Uh, I see there's like 25 comments on here. And I think only a couple of them are actually from design team members. So just a thought here. Well, first of all, let me check in. How are you feeling about this response? I mean, some of the feedback is quite useful, but also there's some feedback where I know, like, okay, this is not how we should be doing it, but I don't really know how to say that to them without, like, I don't know, I, th I think they'll be mad at me if I just say, like, no, this is not how we're supposed to do it. Yeah, well, when you're working uh, in the open, like we are, uh, in the Fedora design team, you'll often get a lot of comments from people who aren't designers, uh, and they think, Maybe they know what's best, but like you have probably attempted these things, tried them out, they don't work, they do work. And I think you probably don't actually have to respond to them at all. Or you can make a sweeping kind of, thank you everyone for your input here. This is the direction that we're moving forward with. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you can actually just kind of ignore most of it. Um, <laughs> that would be my advice because working the open can be kind of tough. So would you feel confident like writing something like that? 
I think so. I mean, can I run it by you first? Like, I can draft the message and then you can just let me know if, if that works. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I think I would feel more comfortable knowing that, like, I, I don't in, I unintentionally sound rude or just sound like, oh, I know what, you, what I'm talking about, but you don't, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Stay there. <laughs> I'm sure you must have watched a real life scenario, first time in your life, the conversation between a mentor and mentee, and you must have some questions. So anybody who would like to go first and ask the questions. If not, I'll go ahead because I, ha I, I have questions. OK, so I'll go first. What I have seen is uh, the approach here you have taken is like giving the advice and then you end it with a question, which is which I really liked. Okay, do you think um, so? This scenario can be true, or this scenario stands um, okay for the person who is very very new. Do you think these kind of mentorships? And I, I'm pretty much sure this kind of mentorship is always required at every stage, when you, even if you are mature, even if you have spent enough time in Fedora. So do you think this approach needs to be tweaked or the mentorship should be situational mentorship? And with respect to the mentee, like where they stand, are they mature, are they new, are they what kind of struggle they have. According to that, your answer will change, or do you think that that needs to be changed, or this should be a situational mentorship? So do I understand the question? It's, you know, depending on where the, the mentee is in their career or open source journey, is the approach different? Um, yes and no. I would say that it needs to be adjusted by personality. Like, I'm really familiar with Samara, so this was easy for us to do, right? Um, if I don't, like, at, at, like uh, for outreachy internships, for example, there's a certain point in the internship where I'm just meeting the person. I don't know their personality. I don't know what kind of feedback they're going to react well to or not. So I think that there's definitely a point in the relationship where you're testing the waters um, with that person. Um, and I think it's about trust building. That would, that would adjust how I approach a mentee, is how much trust have I built with this person, right? So I might be more cautious, um, and if I know them really well, I can make <laughs> jokes and say things like, just ignore them, <laughs> right? Like, so I wouldn't necessarily say that to someone I was just getting to know as, as a mentee. Does that make sense? Okay. Anybody would like to add? Any of you would like to add to that answer? What do you think? So I mentor people in a in a corporate setting, and you know I think the uh, you know as a leader, there's some folks who who work for me are very 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 senior, and you know my mentorship with them is much more high level, strategic. It's it's much more like making sure that they're thinking kind of in building on that knowledge, and it's less about maybe personal development at that point. It's more just about you know fine tuning, uh, uh, just skills at that point, right? But somebody who's um, very new, very junior, and I'll agree with that, right? It's it's you're gonna have a very different touch in that in that point, right? It's gonna be more personal, in my opinion, actually, because they're still you're still building confidence in somebody who's maybe newer in an organization or newer just in general in, in their career. They may not have the same needs as somebody in that position, right? Um, you know, and I I think that it really just depends on uh, you know what that person's looking to get. Right, like what what kind of uh, support that person really needs, right? Um, you know, even even in Fedora, I, I meet quite a bit with uh, Justin. You know, as a as a mentor to me in the community, right? Um, you know, I I have had to readjust my own thinking in 
coming from a corporate world to open source, you know, uh, I, I, I've really appreciated the, the way that, you know, even for me, I'm, I'm senior in my career, but I'm, I'm new here. And, you know, again, having a mentor who's been kind of a, you know, hey, let's, let's kind of, you know, start from basics. I've actually really appreciated that because it's helped me reset myself as I come into this space. So. Do you want to add anything? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Big round of applause for our actors <laughs> for today. Okay. With that, I would like to ask one standard question to each of our uh, panel members and making sure that the camera is not blocked, otherwise Justin going to kill me. So you can take as much time as you would like to, OK? So the question is, what I wish I knew? And it has to be related to the mentorship, mentee, open source, the relevant. One question, what I wish I knew? Right, I'm going to be uh, quite direct. Um, nothing matters. Try to do whatever you want and what makes you happy. Um, there is no sense into doing things that other things are right, but you do not. Go ahead and do what makes you happy, whatever th that is. Well, no, if, if that causes damage to other people. Try not to do that. <laughs> I think I would say that um, it's, it sounds kind of extreme, but like no one knows anything. I feel like when you enter, like for example, an open source community, it can seem like, oh, that person is so knowledgeable and they know everything about everything and I can never be that person and I don't know anything and it just sounds like, oh, to get to that level, I have to put in like years and years and years of um, effort and time into it. But that's not true. At, at every point when I would feel like, ah, I don't know anything, I know someone would come up to me and say the exact same thing to me, like, oh, you know so much, how do you know that? I'm like, but I don't know anything, what do you mean? So it's, I, and I feel like it's the same for other people as well. Like, no one has it sorted. Everyone is like, going through the motions, they're also learning new things, and they are essentially at the same level as you are in just a different time. So mine is related to formal mentorship, specifically outreachy, um, as a mentor. Um, taking on a mentor to do a project takes the same amount of time it would take for you to do it, plus more. It's not like you're handing off a project and you're like expecting it to come back all done and you're like, check, done. Um, it actually takes more effort than doing it yourself. So mentorship is a labor of love and it is not a time saver. Uh, very it, well said. Can we have a <laughs> round of applause for that very statement? But it is worth it. I think working in open source is very different than closed source in that closed source is all about just get it done, right? Get a deliverable in place. Whereas in open source, and I think the hardest thing even for me, and I, I'm, a, I'm a corporate raider, you know, I'm, I'm you know, big, big company guy, right? Um, coming into open source is, uh, it's not about the deliverable, it's about the community and the, the people along the way. And I think it's really takes some adjustment for anybody kind of coming into this, into the world of open source and is how, not how it gets, not what gets done, it's how it gets done. And making sure that, you know, you're working in the open together to get to a common goal, so. Jenny, you would like to add? I wish I knew that even as a quite uh, incompetent career-wise beginner, I can have a profound impact on the life of my mentor. If he sees me grow, that can, add to his general satisfaction and I wish I have knew, known that before because that was holding me back to to really go into ask people to mentor me that that's amazing would you 
like to elaborate a little bit that what is that movement where did, did you realize that you are making an impact on your mentor as well as a mentee? So one of them, they told me quite openly, what, which is very, very amazing. And I couldn't believe it at the time. But now I've heard it more than once. And yeah, it, it makes sense now that, that it's, it's um, yeah, if you light a lamp for someone else, it will brighten your own path. And that, that also there is just satisfaction if, if you see somebody takes your advice and gets the results from, from changing. And yeah, my mentors told me that was satisfaction for them. Amazing. So it means if we analyze this answer, the, all of these answers, I think the benefit is both ways in this relationship. And it is very important to openly share uh, these feedbacks in this relationship, right? With that, I'll move to the uh, next question. Is that what are I understand that we are virtually meant, sometimes we are virtually, most of the time we do it virtually, right? So what are those tools or methods or strategies to make this relationship work better when we are, at the, we are not in person together? What are those best practices which worked in your favor? I think as a mentee, what worked for me was that my mentor would often uh, just talk to me, you know, like our, our sessions just didn't start with like, oh, did you work on this or did you work on that? So many times you would spend the entire session just talking about like life and random stuff, like how I would be catching up with a friend. And then we would have to schedule another session to actually work. But, <laughs> but still, it just made it seem like, like yeah, she was, she was right there, you know. So I think that, that really helps, like not making it all about the work that we are doing, but also just like about the person. So actually developing a relationship yes. and not just making it about work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this might be a little bit odd, but being vulnerable um, with your mentee, like, approaching them like approaching a call like oh how's it going you know they answer and they're like how are you and it's like i'm actually doing kind of crappy today like i have a lot going on i have this stressor i have that stressor um it just makes you more human um and helps to build trust and like i don't think it's something that like undermines authority or anything like that or your knowledge on a topic, it just makes you human. It's tools, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's something, I'm distracted easily, I'll just admit it. Um, and I appreciate having a kind of like a, here's what we've talked about, here's what we're going to talk about next. and. This is what we're going to walk away with. Um, you know, I think it's it's not always done everywhere. Um, you know, and not every meeting I've ever had do we have an agenda nor action items. Um, I appreciate Fedora, we do, um, but not everywhere in the world you do that, right? Um, but I think as a, a mentor-mentee relationship, it's really important to document that because you can go back and look at it at any point in time. You have a reference point. So, Rene. Okay. Yeah, um, I think one of the most, uh, I'm not sure if this is a tool per se, but in essence is to make sure that the, as a, as a mentor, that the mentee see you as, see, I understand that you were in that position in the past. Like, okay, everyone has been a junior in their job. Like it's it's not possible to be born with knowledge. You started maybe 20 years ago, but you did. So I think it's very important to let them know, hey, I know where you are. I know how you feel. 
I know you have some questions. I also had them. It's not a big deal. We are going to move forward. And I'm, go I'm here to help you. As long as you show that to the person, to the mentee, I think they can empathize more with you and you also with them. So, yeah, that could have to build trust. I would like to, do you want to like, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, I would also add to the whole vulnerability and open yourself up in both ways. That's very, very helpful to build the trust between mentor and mentee. And this is what makes this really special for me. If you, yeah, if, if there's really vulnerability and people show you or tell you that they've been there before with all the insecurities and um, yeah, being afraid of challenges and that they might not be able to make it. And if a senior person tells you that they had all of these doubts, that uh, can be really useful. To, to, to yeah, get the con the connection deeper. Yeah. Amazing. I I really love all all of those uh, thoughts. And with that, this question is linked. Uh, so we talked about the vulnerability. We talked about not knowing the things is okay. Asking the questions is okay. Using the tools and everything. So do you think currently I don't see there is there is a formal way to have the mentor mentee relationship between a newcomer okay they can apply for through outreach even gsoc there are tools for that I think as a mature contributor as well they give a lot to the community and they also have that kind of pressure and they can also definitely utilize having a mentor who can listen to them, who can tell, okay, you're gonna burn out, you need to take it slow, how you are doing, how you can connect your contribution to the strategy of Fedora. So all of those things, do you think it makes sense to formalize that kind of platform for the existing people as well, to have a formal mentee, mentor for them? Yes. <laughs> I, I, no, I mean, 100%. I mean, I think it's, it's uh, you know, everybody's going to be in different points in their journey, right? I mean, like, this isn't a hierarchical organization, but, you know, it doesn't mean that somebody can't add value and, and teach you things that you wouldn't know, right? I think uh, every one of us has skills that are transferable to others who might be looking to gain those skills or to learn more. Um, even you could be doing, you know, Fedora Linux back in the days of, Red Hat Linux, you know, nine. You know, I mean, you've been doing it since you know the origination. I mean, but you're still going to need to learn things, right? Um, I think uh, it's, uh, I think it's something that we should be looking at more is how to open that up and make it so that all of us, no matter where we are in our journey in the project, um, can become a mentee or mentor someone else. So no matter where they are in the journey. So I kind of have a differing opinion. So I'm not going to say no, but it's I'm in favor of it, but I don't think it should be formalized as a formal process. The main reason is because it's like probably at Fedora there is a very small number of juniors um, because with the time they grow to more senior profile. Um, well, usually the string of people coming is smaller than the people that is already in. That's natural thing, it's okay. And you can handle that. But a formal process to a mentorship program like for senior people, it's it's like a huge effort and someone needs to maintain that. And I think it, it's really non-sustainable because of the amount of people that will be there. Instead, I look forward for a mentorship culture in the project where um, everyone feels like a mentor and everyone maintains. So if you are from, you are a packager and you want to learn something about marketing, 
you can just go to federal marketing and say, hey, I need help with this. I want to learn more about this. And then someone from federal marketing will pick up on you and say, hey, sure. Um, yeah, I can help you with this and this and this and so on. And make it something like more informal. Of course, the problem with that is that, well, people and <laughs> cultural differences and different people, different ways of behaving and so on. So it's really also hard to have but I think it's more, if you reach that point, it's more sustainable than a formal process because the formal process requires a lot of effort just to be run. You want to reply to that? I don't think it needs to be incredibly formal, but I think we also should do better at recognizing who is mentoring and who is available to mentoring. I'm, I'm really obsessed right now with we should have Noggin show you are mentoring and who are you mentoring and that you're available to mentoring. I, I, I keep talking about that. I, I would love to see something like that if someone wants to work on that. Um, but I think it would be you just not everybody has the time and bandwidth to do it. But I think it is something that we should recognize our mentors right and give them you know the same value we do to packagers and to anyone else in the project. But yeah. Thank you so much. I think you have something to add. Okay. Uh, Maybe it's a, oh, oh we never mind, we done, all right. <laughs> we don't have time. So, uh, uh, as you guys are talking, my head was at, um, like, where's the space for, like, I don't know if you'd call it mentorship, but the peer-to-peer -peer conversations that happen that may have, like, the, the same framework of, of mentorship where maybe one person is not formally a mentor or a mentee, but for that conversation, it's, hey, here's where I'm at. And then that other person is being a sounding board is mentoring you in that conversation. And then it, 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 to, to, um, to his point, it, it's not formal. <laughs> so it's not part of maybe the broader initiative, but I think that there may be a space for peer-to-peer -peer dialogue that's informed by, you know, both people bringing what they know about mentorship to specific conversations is is needed in a proactive way or sometimes in a more reactionary way. I don't know. Thank you so much. I th and thank you so much for all my uh, panelists here. I think we are out of time. With, but I think we all are uh, living with a thought that this is the relationship where both mentor and mentee get benefit. So with that thought, I will uh, like to close this. Thank you so much and big round of applause for our panelists. Thank you. And since we love badges in the Fedora community, we have a badge for you all that attended the panel discussion. I will leave it here, so feel free to come and scan it. Thank you. Go. She's already scanned it, though. I already scanned it. Oh, I just want to be first. Spira was first. I scanned it when I made the post.